Subsequently, happening in another time period in the distant future, there was a 16-year-old girl named Skylar Williams who was an estranged zesty 16-year-old from the future who found a time-traveling device one day when she was pulling a dare off for an overnight stay in the movie theater. He enjoys singing, fashion, art, P.E., horseback riding, and listening to music. She is zest and humor, but can also be very sneaky at times and a bit mischievous at times. She is an American Christian. She is currently at school. Physically, Skylar is in good shape. She is short but has a big heart for her age with pale skin, brown hair and brown eyes. She lives in a middle class neighborhood in San Francisco. Her mother is a widow and father is not really involved in her life. Her mother's name is Gretchen who is a school teacher and father is named Luke who is mechanic. Skylar goes to Cinematic Middle School in San Francisco, where her favorite subjects are art and music. She loves her teacher Mrs. Mackey but hates Mr. Myers whose interests include speaking in a really annoying voice. Skylar's best friend is a kid named Brinkley. They get along good most of the time. She also hangs around with David and Clean. They enjoy watching movies together. Moreover about Skylar's backstory is an act of kindness shown by a tragic warrior inspired him to try to act likewise. Seeing a parent treated cruelly by authority figures left her distrustful of similar people. Her career choice was influenced by the admiration of a fortunate fashion designer. Nevertheless, Skylar had this fervent disciple of watching movies. Every day she is moviegoer going to the four-star cinematic to catch a flick, who finds herself staying after a movie to watch the credits roll. One day she rose to a challenge and accepted a dare to stay overnight in the future version of the four-star movie theater. Because of that, she wandered into the basement and waited for the theater to close but little did she know, there was a presence of a supreme being in the atmosphere with another plan in mind for the path that she was on in life that would change his life. Because of that, the presence of this supreme being descended on her, giving her superpowers of strength and supernatural abilities to jump into any movie scene for wisdom, knowledge with divine intuitive intercessory prayer, Eventually, she discovered a looser time-traveling device through a loose floorboard that she stepped into as she was leaving the basement. Could his day get any better than this? Oh, but it has. Just when she is about to get caught for being in the movie theater after business hours, she makes an escape just in the nick of time, by using the time-traveling device to jump herself into a certain period in time but unaware that it was set to the default setting of the 1950s. Until finally, after she arrived in the year of 1954 seated in a movie showing in the old movie theater, she gets an insight to jump into this old film and accordingly jumped in a scene with the younger version of her favorite actress. Upon flicking back to reality, she has a run-in with celluloid just as the superhero is returning from a film and meets Joel Flickstein who took Skylar under his wings as his cinematic protege aka sidekick along with reels and gave her the nickname Diamond Differess. Every day he uses the time-traveling device to jump into the time period of 1954 to see Joel Flickstein and to be movie mentored by him with Eaton as she jumps into an old movie before returning back to her future time. At the end of the day, after rebounding back to the future, Skylar discovered that there's power in her name being that Diamondiferous refers to the source of his power so in her excitement she had a sleepless night and stayed up to make a superhero costume that looks like a futuristic retro combat stylish athletic suit designed in vivid yellow with a bit of pink and vivid violet. 
It also includes a blaster, neutralizer that is an electro-biomechanical neural transmitting zero synapse repositioner that is a top secret device. The blaster, neutralizer has the ability to wipe the mind of anybody who sees the flash as its eureka phaser generates a creativity beam. The hit person gets an aha moment. Used on stock scene partners or yourself. It has a hood built into the suit, a global positioning device in the belt, and a pair of gauntlets. Her emblem displayed on his shoulders. It also includes a bandana. It stretches to accommodate anyone who wishes to wear it. It also includes a mask, an inertial dampers. Not to mention, Skylar's powers that are generated from her name are enhancing or draining life energy and creating copies of herself through movie characters. She also has immunity to most types of radiation and super memory. She received her superpowers when the procedure involving a mutant diamond worked better than expected, when she was exposed to a strange chemical found in a diamond in the rough while studying an alien planet shortly after it crashed landed on Earth so the mutant diamond became a part of her suit and would be of assistance to her when necessary. But little did Skylar know was her mom is a deity and your dad is a chthonic being, as his flaws and weaknesses are short-sighted, moody, and possessive of characters. Eventually, when Skylar traveled back to the 1950s, he was ecstatic to share her suit and tell what she has discovered to them. Thus, they recruited as Diamond Differers to join Celluloid and Reels in their work with the law enforcement to assist them on arduous unsolved cases together, as they fought crime thereafter. And so, the flick texting stories of three movie journeyers begins. The following morning as Joel was opening the movie theater, then starts projectors and opens shutters to project images onto screens, he received this intuition to throw up an orison for the one person who attempts suicide every 38 seconds to be saved and kanged into celluloid to make intervention for them. All the while, Eaton would be off in the cinematic alternative school then looking out for the little people in the real world as reels. Skylar would be scoping out the popular 1950s movies that were in showing at the Four Star Theater and flicks jumping into them for guidance from the characters. When Joel returned, he would be coordinating equipment operation with presentation of supplemental material, such as music, oral commentaries, and then sound effects. Until he gets an intuition to save suicidal and springs up into celluloid. While at the same moment in the cinematic school, Reels was off in his movie class in cinematic alternative school and standing up for the little people in the world subsequent to Skylar being in another theater that was showing the 1950s movie, The Barefoot Contessa, 1954, and jumping into it accordingly. Moving on to fulfill his next duty after being back, Joel operates special effects equipment, such as stereopticons, to project pictures onto screens. Until an intuition interrupts and he springs up into celluloid to save another from suicide. While at the same moment in the cinematic school, Reels was off in his movie class in cinematic alternative school and standing up for the little people in the world subsequent to Skylar being in another theater that was showing the 1950s movie, Father of the Bride, 1950, and jumping into it accordingly. When celluloid flicks back into the TH4 star theater as Joel his next duty of preparing film inspection reports, attendance sheets, and log books. Simultaneously, until an intuition interrupts for him to spring up into celluloid and save another person from suicide. While at the same moment in the cinematic school, Reels was off in his movie class in cinematic alternative school and standing up for the little people in the world subsequent to Skylar being in another theater that was showing the 1950s movie, The Thing from Another World, 1951, and jumping into it accordingly. When done with his last task, after jumping out of celluloid skin and into Joel Flickstein, he setting up and inspect curtain and screen controls until another intuition calls and he springs up into celluloid again to save a suicidal. 
while at the same moment in the Cinematic School, Reels was off in his movie class in Cinematic Alternative School and standing up for the little people in the world subsequent to Skylar being in another theater that was showing the 1950s movie, Godzilla, 1951, and jumping into it accordingly. Joel arranges schedules for theater facilities upon return as at the same time movie quotes are flooding the thoughts reels his movie class jumps in cinematic school and standing up for the little people in the world thereafter, and just when Joel thinks he can rest from the intuitions and saving suicidals, he gets another one in a flash that causes him to spring up into celluloid to make intervention. While at the same moment, Skylar being in another theater that was showing the 1950s movie, Their War of the Worlds, 1953, and jumping into it accordingly. When he returns, Joel hangs up his celluloid suit and fulfills the task of removing film splicing in order to prepare films or shipment after showings, and return films to their sources. After that Joel clocks out to take a lunch as Reels flicks back into reality to join him, along with Skylar. Where they all would make small talk over a lunchbox and juice box. They return to work, cinematic school shortly, and watching movies afterward. On the clock again, Joel utilizes the equipment required to rewind films and operates special effects equipment thereafter, he proceeds to close the facilities according to rules and schedules. When Joel closes the theater, and he would hang around the projectionist booth for Skylar to finish watching his last movie and reels flicks back to reality as Ayrton, as they would say goodnight to each other before departing their separate ways once again, while Skylar jumped back to the future and Ayrton went to his broom closet. However, while Joel wheels himself home in his wheelchair, he has another run-in with an FB most wanted fugitive, Robert William Fisher who is wanted for allegedly killing his wife and two young children and then blowing up the house. The FBI is offering a reward of up to $100,000 for information leading directly to the arrest of Robert William Fisher. Joel pulls out his cell phone and jumps Robert William Fisher and himself into the The Butterfly Effect movie from the future to rewrite the perp's story. But will it cause a heart change that'll lead to a surrender? The next day as Joel is opening the movie theater, and starting everything up. Ayrton runs up to him with an glitches gazette newspaper, blurting out the headline, saying, Dead Found Fugitive. Joel takes the newspaper from Ayrton's hands to find that a character in the The Butterfly Effect movie has probably caused the death of the FBI's most wanted fugitive, Robert William Fisher. Joel sat pondering over the perplexity, saying, if I wasn't the character, then were you? Ayrton looks at Joel, shrugging his shoulders to say, don't look at me. It wasn't me. Then, who? Joel asked. Promptly, Skylar rebounds through a time warp out of the blue with a newspaper from the future and hold it up to Joel and Ayrton as the headline reads, fellow FBI agent and estranged father reunites with son after resignation. Joel and Ayrton see that it looks like the same FBI's most wanted fugitive on the front cover of their 1950s newspaper, but he looks like a new man as whatever has happened in the movie has changed him into a new person. I changed him. Skylar blurted. I assume you're referring to the FBI's most wanted fugitive who's on the cover of our 1950s newspaper. Joel responded. Skyle appears at the newspaper from the 1950s and responds to Joel's words, saying, Yup. That's my pops in his prime. Do you have any idea what you've done? Joel asked. Skyler just dismissively shrugged and didn't look interested. You can't change who someone was without changing their past and dramatically affecting their future. Joel said. Oh, I haven't told anybody this but Robert William Fisher was my grandpa who, who had been drawn into a criminal lifestyle and turned his felonious talents to a hitman for the mafia trade. I know it was wrong messing with time, but it worked though, and with the man upstairs I helped to rewrite his story to change him into a new person. Skylar responded. It's all good. I see it worked out for the best. One less fugitive in 1954, yet the 20th century gained a nobleman. Joel said. 
Ethan then turns away, whistling as Joel returns to work and Skylar goes off into a theater to watch a film from the 1950s. The end. At least. For now.